Hello, folks. Hello, hello, Hooray. Hooray. Welcome, Happy, welcome, uh, welcome. Second day of the chat. Lockdown. Freedom Day, honestly. You'll see that today we're joined by the very special and very gorgeous Miss Hattie Hayridge. Hooray! Hooray. 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 And she has taken on the bookcase challenge in, in spades here. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And she's so, read every one of those books that you can see behind you. Yeah, I just. Oh God, it's been hard work in the lockdown trying to get through all this lot. What are you reading uh, that's now? That's the only one I got left now. What's that one you're reading now? <laughs> it's um, Gulliver's Travels. That's that's why it's bigger than all the others, actually. Oh, okay. Um, that's why it doesn't quite fit in. Yeah, that's why it doesn't fit in the shelf. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. uh, you've left it's left a gap now it's in your bookshelf, isn't it? Behind your head. Well, there you are. It's a, oh, a, a no. bit of glamour, a bit of glamour for your Sunday afternoons instead of the three old fogies. Yeah. We've got we've we've got a bit of talent in. Oh, nice day. <laughs> Salt Lake City. Hi from Salt Lake City, guys. Florida, hello guys. Sheffield, Florida. Are you locked Ooh. down in Florida? Hi Simon in Sheffield. Yeah, it's gone it's gone locked down again, Florida wise, hasn't it guys? Uh, yeah. Manhattan, hi. Hi Manhattan. Manhattan on the land is doing very well from what I can hear. Holland. Hello. Canberra, hey, our Aussie friends back in again. You are so good staying up at this time of night. Yeah, good Adelaide. Day. Adelaide. <laughs> um, Blackpool. Down, oh, yeah. down where the apple. Oh, bangs love it. God's own. Oh, country. and a mank. Yay. Poughkeepsie, <laughs> New York. Hello from Poughkeepsie. I always love that name. California. Oh, that is a great name, isn't it? Poughkeepsie is a great name, isn't it? Yeah. California, yeah. you are in lockdown. You've been very naughty boys, and you've all got to go back home and lock up again. <laughs> Yorkshire, I'm staying up for you guys. <laughs> Yorkshire, the Yorkshire men are staying up. The apple. The apple. There's Leeds, more Yorkshire. Plough Keepsy, great name. Great where, name. where was Cable it? City. Um, okay, stay indoors at Phoenix. Night. Oh, I'm sorry, Phoenix. Phoenix. was from in New York. Landardno, you can't go to the time. <laughs> Bad luck. Landardno, one of my favourites. Emily. Another California. Wow, fantastic. A Cuntleth. Yeah, I saw that last week from the Cuntleth. I come from Kersus, originally Tequila. My little village is uh, 20 miles down the road from you, Kersus. Cheryl, lockdown in Leicester. Bad luck. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hello up in Fife. And so sorry your pubs haven't opened yet, you poor <laughs> fools. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know how long ours are going to be open, really, do we? Yeah, so no. we'll take advantage if we... No. Judging by the... Vampire pilling is going to a drop of hunty silly or go, go, go. I'm not going to... Nostar to all our Welsh friends. Or Borodar, I should say. Okay, cool. guys. Uh, well, let's get kicking off. We're 180. Keep coming. I'm, I'm very surprised you're not all out in some beer garden. Um, we are. They're showing this in all the pubs. <laughs> Today we'll be doing uh, Parallel Universe, uh, that show six from season two, and, and the lovely Hattie's first appearance. Um, there may be kissing and uh, cursing, so uh, if you don't like that kind of stuff... Um, Lucy, thank you for reminding us that not everybody drinks. It is this banterish, boyish assumption, and it's very disgusting. Absolutely yeah, ridiculous. Thank you for pulling us up on that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, guys. Are you all lined Starting up? From the beginning, Molly. We thought this time we'd go mad. Just you know, <laughs> don't put, start from the beginning. What do you think? Yeah, the beginning's a bit more uh, ill-defined <laughs> Ill than normal, isn't it? Because we don't have the opening titles as such. Oh well, I still think you should press play and go from there. Okay. So in three, two, one, press. Right. You've got the front of the red dwarf coming towards you. I have. The music playing. Um, and then we go to uh, Ed's, Ed's Top of the Pops number. Yes, here we go. A massive moment. It, actually, it was quite hard to shoot this because we didn't really have the, the time. Shooting dance routines is a little bit, takes a little bit longer than you'd normally imagine. But, hey. Yeah, well, I think the idea for this came because... Um, well, I think Danny kind of twisted our arm. <laughs> yeah, I think so. During hey, when... how, did you, how did you get uh, Norman's ears to wiggle like that? Um, ah, yes. Now, my recollection is black gloves. Uh, black oh, gloves. the old Topo Gizio trick. Him and, doing it himself. Yeah, yeah. So and I think he... when, when uh, Charles Organs was there on Queeg, Danny said, look, you've got to, we've got to do a musical number. Yeah. And we thought, well, we have got 
a West End dancing, singing star. Yeah. And we got yeah. a great choreographer. We might as well do it. And so we did. But then you get, you get Craig and, and uh, Chris, who are not, you know, in any way professional dancers. No, no, they were and good, actually. them into a full number. I mean, they are. I think that's a testament to uh, Charles Hawkins. <laughs> I'll explain my background yes. in a quiet moment, folks. Uh, it is relevant. I'll tell you later. What I love about this, and just watching it again, this is actually insane. This is already an incredibly complicated half-hour sitcom script. Yeah. It's going to be murder to shoot in two days. Yeah, yes. let's never mind about that. Let's just put a three minute full <laughs> on variety sequence at the top of it, yeah. which will take over half yeah. a day to shoot. Uh, let's just go for I mean, the confidence and the just up and Adam bollocks all out uh, of this sh of this episode is extraordinary. So I didn't go to the recording of this, I don't think, Ed. Where did you shoot it? Well, we shot it in the studio. We had to, uh, and, and obviously there in was Manchester. A yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's a budgetary concern. Um, so that's why um, it's scaffolding. <laughs> in the same studio, Ed, or did they give you a second studio for that? I, you know, I can't remember, but I think it was a, a special studio. A nice little note there. Somebody saying Hattie looks younger every time I see her. Yeah, oh, no. I like she, that person. She has got the got worst painting in her attic, honestly. It's the worst what? Painting. Uh -oh. <laughs> Tell me, Tell me <laughs> Craig. Yeah, yeah. Where are you up to now? My phone just. Um, oh God, uh, they're um, in the sleepy quarters, and uh, Chris yeah. is on his. Uh, on his right. Eight or yeah. nine young ladies. <laughs> Yes. So, having been set this request of, um, can we do a dance routine, was that the reason why you, you're, okay, I know how to do it, we'll do it as a dream sequence. Was um, that a device for getting it in? Rob? Rob? Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I was just in hot Hello, so been two bananas and it caught my eye. What did you want? I can't repeat it. I can't repeat it. Sorry, I don't sorry. bother to partake, Rob. I mean, seriously, what is the point? Were you watching, were you watching Seaside Special? And then, yeah. uh, <laughs> special yeah. and then thought, we've got to get this in, Red Dwarf, surely. It was all Danny's fault. We did know Hattie before she appeared in this episode. Hattie, tell us how you, how it came about. How, what happened? So we were looking for a parallel Holly. Yeah. Why I didn't, didn't know that, happen? though. I didn't know that. <laughs> no, I just, um, I was with an agent who, I've been with so many agents. Anyway, this is the what, the first agent I was with who had no interest in alternative comedy or anything. Um, so um, <laughs> I was tricked into being on his books. Anyway, um, <laughs> the, the script just arrived there, which was fantastic. The script just arrived asking me to be hilly. And legend has it, you saw me on Friday Night Live about a month before. I had, I had seen you, yeah. I used to produce Saturday Live uh, the first season and then uh, due to a disagreement with London Weekend I didn't produce Friday Night Live <laughs> uh, but I used to watch it obviously because I loved the show and I saw first time I ever saw Hattie she was doing a set on that and then when the, this script came up, came up and we needed alternative Rimmer Lister and Holly I just thought Hattie had that same deadpan better looking than Norman obviously more hair yeah. generally all around sexier and more uh, uh, lighting up the room but I thought she had that same deadpan humour and I thought she'd be a great match for, mm. for Norman. So uh, we sent the script to her. To her yeah, just, just straight, not even a come in and see us. It was straight, come and be hilly. And I don't apparently, know. Apparently did you come in and read, uh, at, so did you get it straight away? Did we offer it to you? No, you just offered it to me. I had to audition for series three though, ironically, but, I, <laughs> but for series two, I just got sent the script. And apparently that set from Saturday, from Friday Night Live is on YouTube. So anybody, Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. And on my website as well. Anybody who wants to see what we first saw, you can see it there and see why we thought of Norman. Oh. Now. Um, yeah, I was deadpan, although in my head I'm speaking really quick. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, you are. No, you are. <laughs> yeah, we were on stage. <laughs> we on stage like, I think it just goes round too much. Oh. When you're on stage, you think you're speaking normal speed. You don't think you're going slow and deadpan. No, no, I'm, I, I'm not mad on, I like, I'd love to be Joan Rivers, really. I'd like the fast type of mm. comedy, <laughs> but that's just not how it comes out. <laughs> Maybe I'm editing myself all the time. I'm not sure. But um, yeah. And um, I remember on Friday Night Live, 
on Friday Night Live, um, Ben Elton finished with, uh, when I finished, he said, uh, and we're going to be seeing a lot more of Hattie Hayridge. And then I walked across the camera and he went, yeah, not quite that soon, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, one of my favourite lines here, Rob. I was, I was a secretary the year Room before. Um, one of your favourite lines line here, Rob, was um, you couldn't pull a rotten... It was, it couldn't oh, yeah. ...tooth out of a dead horse's head with that one. I've used yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> a great, great line. Now, Molly's got an interesting point. She's saying she's always thought that Rimmer's character is out of character here because he's never really been a sex pest. Hmm. And that's, I think... I don't think it is out of character. I think... Basically, he's, he's got kind of a learned response to women and he thinks this is how you're supposed to do things. Um, but he's got no idea. I do think, Molly, as you know, that he's asexual and they, they do not hook up, do they? Which, you know, um, if you can't score well. with yourself, you are... <laughs> <laughs> Slightly giving the game away here that Aww. the reason that Holly was put in the monitor when you cut to him full frame, there's no frame on it, which is an unusual thing. But like, I think the reasoning behind it was that we, I knew later on that I'm going to have to have two, uh, there, two heads on that screen. So you can see he's got no borders or no framing on his close-up. And that's the first done, time so, you've been like that, Ed, is it? Yeah, I did it on purpose so that yeah. we could accommodate a wider, you know, we could accommodate a wider yeah. screen so, to so keep Ed, both colors. When you, when you, you compare with this, yeah. you actually plan ahead and think what the future shots will be rather than just... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, excuse me, everyone. I'm just going to call my lawyer. That's why you're so good. You're actually oh, working no. out all the way through to the end. I, I love it when uh, Holly gets the countdown wrong. That's a great moment, yeah. I think. Under, under laughed. I thought that was and the great. Holly hop drive, you can tell it's going to be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Simply by the fact you can pick it up and hold it in one hand. <laughs> by the way, there was a bit of chat last week about the editing, and somebody I, I noticed on the chat line had said, was Ed Wooden an online editor or an offline editor? Ah. Uh, and how sweet and modern you are, because when Ed, and Ed Wooden and I were working on these things, there was no such thing as an offline editor. They were yeah. all online editors. We he did both. Editing. We didn't I mean, do offline. It, it was just it one got, editor. Yeah, sweet. Well, we got to a stage where we would edit in an offline suite as opposed to an online suite. And we start not around about this time, maybe the next series. There used to be VHS machines you could edit from one to the other, and that was the beginning of offline editing. Well, so you wind up with a VHS with a cut show on it, and then you have to go and copy it. Do you remember way back when doing a sitcom was really simple? You just joined up the scenes yeah. that you'd show. Yeah. We used to have a thing called a Shabarden. Did you ever use that, Ed? Yeah, yeah. Shabarden was a, a mini tape machine, and you rolled it round. Where it came to the end of the scene, you put a bit of paper in. It was called papering up. You sat in your office mm. and did it. Yeah. And then you put the next bit of paper where the join was going to be. Mm -hmm. You took the machine down in the edit, and that was it. You just did about seven of those, and that was your half hour finished. That was your half hour. And then with this, it became more and more complicated. But, of course, the offline editing suite, the VHS machine, although it had burnt-in time code, it wouldn't remember it. There wasn't any way that you could then remove a disc and then stick it into the online suite. So you had to write them all down. In look, 10, look, 22, 24, yes, 7, you and I, 10, 20, you and I both got domestic systems, didn't we, quite yeah. expensive? And I got one at home, and we start, yeah. I started cutting at home, yeah. We used to insist still... that the A's came to the edit to write all the time codes down suddenly. Yeah. And then, of course, I'd have to write the time codes down when I'm editing. And, of course, I got most of the numbers wrong. So, of course, of Edward course would lose his it temper and go, who, who wrote this down? It's all coming back. It's all coming back. <laughs> yeah, so, and I, I, here I, we I, have. I just oh, apologise for all that. Uh, Here's the parallel my universe, folks. My first ever. No, the first. Rimmer jokes are... Um, are they, sorry, the Ringo jokes are really not right. He is a no. great drummer. No, 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 you're just, the best, not even the best. In ever. hindsight, it was possibly unfair. Um, so that first shot with you, um, Patty. Is that after his lawyers got in touch with you, Rob? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, so I just think it's fairness. It's fairness. When we did Quig, uh, when Quig and Holly were on the screen, I tried to make them look so that they would look like they were eyelining each other. But with this, it was so much more, I realised it was so much more effective to have the two of you looking straight out. Mm -hmm. And we did try it, but... Um, uh, and the two of you looking straight out, particularly with your hair now on the black, it was just perfect. And so that's why you just fired it out the whole way through. Was like that. My hair was like that before. I uh, came to be oven ready, as Boris yeah. might say. Yeah, absolutely, you were oven ready <laughs> hair-wise. Guys, where did the casting come from for 
parallel? I think it was Ed who suggested Suzanne, and she was brilliant. Yeah. She trailed Chris around, sort of copying <laughs> his, his mechanisms and his. his In his rehearsal, movement. she followed yeah. around him. Yeah. yeah. yeah she really. Well, she was a long time friend of Ruby's back from Royal Shakespeare yeah. Company days. Ed, Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Still, they're still really good friends. Yeah. Oh, really? And they, uh, yes, he was from the, uh, yeah, from RSC days. And, um, and Angela, well, I'd seen Angela in something and she was really she good. Was it was like a, a, a police yeah. thing or something. There's no banana in there. What's going on, Ed? It's a parallel universe. There's an invisible peach. Was she in uh, <laughs> one of the hospital soaps, uh, Ed, I think? Yes, you're right. You're right. It's a regular it's working actress, it's it's fine. And She was great in the email list, Brilliant. Yeah. She was brilliant. Yeah, brilliant and suddenly all the likable things about Lister become repellent. When yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and that, I think that's actually interesting because you think, you know, Lister's the well-adjusted one relatively in terms of his attitude to other people. But even he's, you know, exposed here a bit, isn't he? Even it's the scatter, even the scatters where the female scatter chases the male. Very clever. Yeah, I know very that. clever. A hint. <laughs> well, in this very changed social atmosphere yeah. of today, David Wallace is saying, how do you think the sexual politics hold up watching it now? Um, it's a little old fashioned, I would say, but otherwise I, I think I, it holds I, really well. I think the, yeah. you know, the, the, the gender struggle is, is, a, is a fluid one and you can't possibly predict back then what we'll be worried about now. This was <laughs> important then. It was important that men started thinking twice about their attitudes to women and uh, and, and in that sense for. it was ahead of the movement i mean yeah, this yeah it was ahead of yeah. ladder culture as well yeah, yeah. It was ahead of yeah. i'm repeating myself because i think I, you can only hear me when my little yellow box sings on yeah, so you can you all the time hat can you yeah, yeah. yeah. all that stuff oh, you said about Not paul we heard all that yeah we heard you <laughs> being horrible about me yeah. <laughs> and then i mean jumping ahead slightly rob but of course the the cat the twist on the cat is just wonderful was, was that an immediate thing or did you oh I, we were just thinking about what can we do for him i mean did did anyone out there see that come in i didn't that it would be a dog no when it's i read better the script, as a dog. It. it's much better than if it oh, was God, no, it's much better than a feline i mean it's just mm. yet again he's thwarted his desperation yeah. he's thwarted. angela delivers this very well as well he's a dog where did we get him from the dog <laughs> Have to see dogs. Have to see. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, I know him really well. I mean, he was around uh, regularly. Did we do, did we audition for that one, Ed? Um, I think we did. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, I, we, we knew when we audition people, we tended to know who they were. You know, we'd work with them, or we there was some connection. I think it was a connection with you. Oh, well, there you are. Yeah, we're, yes, he auditioned for Morris Minor, which was the Danny Hawk show we talked about a couple of weeks ago. Which and didn't there, know, and Danny, Danny shamelessly, shamelessly, shamelessly talking to the camera. I saw him afterwards in a musical, Space Vixens or something. He was in. A musical. I, I think I probably saw him auditioning for, for uh, Morris Minor, and that's where he came from. Ha, there's a legend that Norman, you wanted to put the kiss marks on Norman's face. Ah, yeah. Well, I didn't know. I hadn't really, I hadn't done any telly, really. So I just, <laughs> they said, oh, we put the kiss marks on Norman. And I said, oh, do I do that? And he went, no, no, the makeup lady does that. <laughs> oh, so I, did thought, the I thought. Did kiss him, or did he paint them on? No, they were oh, painted they on by makeup. makeup. But I was dead keen for Hattie to do it in vision, but you it know, they're easier to kiss. Oh, no, it's better coming back like that. That is so hard to paint lips on. It must be easier. Oh, it's not. Like, look. It's... Yes, but you've got lips to go round, Hat. I'm saying <laughs> Norman's uh, there's, a, there's a lot of people asking about the cat breaking the fourth wall when he just reacts to camera. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, very occasionally, Danny and I couldn't resist it. I said, go on, put it straight in the lens, you know, yeah, yeah. Whatever, make myself look big. <laughs> And then off. It's too good. You can't resist it. No, it's good like that. It's good like that. Yeah. We, we did occasionally, Danny and I, plot to play straight into the lens. If it's good oh, enough, if it's good enough for Shakespeare. So here's another piece of Howard music, a, a variation of Tongue Tide on that long, uh, if you're on the same place, on the big uh, ship shop. Two people dancing together. It's difficult to try and cover a, a dance when there's only three people there <laughs> make it look fun <laughs> oh, i'd have joined in 
did you did was this in front of an audience because i remember watching it but i don't remember no. if it was in front yeah of yeah. yeah this yeah. was yeah. this, this uh, pre shoot i think ed was it yeah, this bit was this bit. I think was in front of the audience. I'm, not sure. I'm guessing the party scene would have been pre-recorded. Yeah, you're right. There's lots of smoke in it. No, it must be uh, pre-recorded. Oh, right. oh, is that what you meant? <laughs> Sorry. Right. I must have watched it on yeah. a monitor. I remember yeah. watching it. It must have been a rehearsal. I watched. Obviously. Yeah, but it was interesting that the time laughs very well if this is a pre-record. H on the drinks, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> Class. Mm -hmm. Class. Very yeah, attention to detail. The, the 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 horror of Rimmer faced with, as you say, Rob, the ultimate failure of pulling. Yeah. You can't even pull yourself. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely a sense of he had this coming. I mean, that's why <laughs> you kind of set it up so strongly in the first scene. His attitude to women. He's you know you've got to, he's got to be heading for a fall. Totty. No, uh, um, someone's asking if Arlene was appalling because all, all alternative uh, Rimmers seem to be appalling, apart from Ace, of course. Uh, but no, this is just Rimmer is appalling. <laughs> <laughs> but this this Rimmer has no redeeming features. I mean, we all know for all his appallingness, Chris's Rimmer is actually eventually lovable. <laughs> Whereas his, this alternate is just... <laughs> But it is all the cliches. It's just yeah. so clever to reverse them like this and show them. It's very well she did it. She pointed out to the old dude and went, frigid, as if there was somebody actually listening. <laughs> <laughs> Great performance yeah. from the dog. I thought he was very yeah. good. Yeah, the brandish of a huge raw bone. <laughs> I'm sure these days we'd probably have to provide him with a fake one. Is that real? Is that bone no. real? I'm afraid so. I think it will be, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's in the beer, Ed? Um, well, there's two types of beer. We, we would either have um, non-alcoholic beer. I know there wasn't any in there. Ginger beer shandy. No, it, it was like a really coloured lemonade. But also, if, it's, if people had to drink a lot very quickly, what you could do is you get a pint glass and then you get another smaller glass and stick it upside Ooh. down inside it. So you just actually have liquid around the outside and it looks like it's full. Yeah. 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 But in this scene, we didn't have any of those. <laughs> <laughs> they made a special... When, on the two Ronnies, we always had to have those special glasses because... Yeah. Mm. Uh, Corbett hated drinking any bulk. Yeah. yeah. When he yeah. had to be, when he, remember the famous pub scene, the two old boys in the pub. Yeah. When he see, he always had a, a, a fake glass with something heavy like Guinness in it because it's so yeah. thin by the time you pour yeah. it into that glass. Yeah. Yeah. But I've, I've done that if someone wants to do tequila shots, I just chuck it behind me because no one yeah. can tell. <laughs> um, <laughs> you can, interestingly, you can on camera. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean in real life. Oh, I mean sorry. In real life. That wall at the back of the bar in the Groucho Hattie. Now I know. <laughs> yeah. Or well, the cappuccino machine. I've done that once. Hey, it's opening tomorrow, isn't it? Hats. First night. Yeah, yeah. Are you going? I presume. I'm going. Right? It's a bit of a palaver. You've got to book and things like okay. that. Forgive us with the showbiz chat, folks. We thought we just. Yeah, I mean, really, <laughs> they're talking about the Groucho for God's sake. But it's opening tomorrow. Come on. God Almighty. It's reopening tomorrow. Reopening. Yeah. Um. So, uh, the two of them chatting together here. Yeah, yeah John, just... Hattie and I are <laughs> <laughs> the Groucho. It's where we meet normally. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm not a member of the Groucho Club, and nor is my wife. The last time I went to the Groucho Club, they went, hello. I went, hello, I'm meeting Ruby here. They said, oh, are you? Are you Ed? I went, yes. They said, A, you're not a member. B, nor is Ruby. Here's a bill she didn't pay for last time. Pay it <laughs> and get out. Oh, no. So I, I went to Black's I... across the road. I think I've been asked for a reference for you, Ed, and refused. I think that may be why you're <laughs> John Watson's wife used to be a waitress at the Grouch. I remember her well, John. I know exactly who you mean. Yeah. <laughs> now, the dance routine by Danny, I'm, I'm always slightly sad that I speeded it up because it was actually very good. Um, uh, but we speeded it up really for, for time because he did quite a long routine. Of course, him and Charles decided to do a routine, which was way, way longer than I asked for. You know, <laughs> you know, 15 seconds will do, you know, 45 seconds later. 
Um, and he'd already uh, done his dance yeah, bit. And, and, I, and I didn't want to, I didn't want to cut it, so I speeded it up. And I'm not sure whether I should have just tightened it up. I don't know. To be fair, Ed, uh, Joy, uh, Joey Sharples, I don't think they did ban Ed. I think he's never applied. <laughs> Which is much more up there. No, I just didn't pay. She, pay, she, wouldn't, she wouldn't want to <laughs> be a you member. Of bills, that was the problem. problem. <laughs> Where are you, Ed? Century Club or Soho House? Where's your hang-up? Uh, the Electric. electric the Electric. Around really the corner cool. from me. Much more upmarket. <laughs> well, you could not... go to the old White City. You could go to the old BBC studios. And yeah, well, there's, I, a, um, there's um, a Soho House in there, isn't it? In the old TV Yeah, there is. I've, I've been there and I worked it out and I found out that at the back of the, one of the bars on the fourth floor by the window, if I sat there, it was exactly the same place where I was production manager on the Late Late Breakfast Show. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, All right, now this gross. Your smart, Cal. <laughs> that is gross. That now is, that gross. is, a, that is um, from the speed at which the beer comes out of the glass. That's a trick glass. That's a yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, I was thinking about the spitting on the face more than that. Oh, know, was that in the script? I think. Yeah, that was. I don't think it was. <laughs> it was. It was. <laughs> Not something we'd recommend doing. Not, hers. <laughs> <laughs> Not something she just did. Yeah. <laughs> Not recommended currently to do that well, in the past, or in fact, <laughs> ever. I don't think it would have been allowed. Sticky floors are grosser than beer on the face. I agree. There used to be a lot of clubs in Manchester where mm. the carpet was so sticky you felt like Spider Man going to the. And you think, <laughs> put that on the ceiling and the walls, you can fit twice as many people in here. Hats, did you know when you, when you eventually did audition for Series 3, did you know that actually there were lots of people? competing at that point, even though you'd already... Well, yeah, I did. Yeah, I did, because I'm quite good at reading upside down. That used to help me for my normal jobs, because then <laughs> I could say what I'd done and where I'd been mm. and stuff like that. So I used to read the, my application form upside down. So um, I think Janine... The only one I remember, I think Janine Davitsky was on it. Yeah, was she? yeah. Um, God and Jesus, <laughs> which I think was a double act at the time. I don't know which one you <laughs> <to> have. <laughs> um... Oh, I can't, I can't remember who else, but I know it was blokes and women. I, that's what, actually, that's what I kind of wanted to ask you. Do you remember who else was on the list? Um, uh, I do remember no, Janine, and, and, and she didn't sort of latch into it like you did. He so is I very thought. deadpan. She plays that yeah. slow deadpan very well, but she wasn't quite the same. Well, I worked with Janine, obviously, on Benidorm, and she's a yeah. fantastic comic actress. Yeah. Yes, John, I do remember Andrew Christie very well. He was the gaffer at at um, Complete Video, which was the oh, yeah. company set up by Jasper Carrot and Paul Smith, which uh, yeah. Ed and I used extensively. Paul Smith now one of the richest men in the world. One of the richest men in the world because yeah. he has the rights to millionaire. Well, he did have, he sold them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What happened was, interestingly, the last pilot for Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, ITV refused to pay for it all in the end and he was so desperate to get it doing and they put so much invested so much time and effort into it he remortgaged his house to pay for the listen um for the final pilot paul, paul and i were runners Fair together enough. i've known him since we were literally mm. kids mm. and he has made an absolute shed load of money from millionaire but mm. always remember when you learn that fact that he did have to go home to his wife one night and say mm. i have had to remortgage the house because i've had to guarantee mm. To ITV that I'll share the cost if this one doesn't work because the first pilot really didn't work at all. Mm. Um, yeah. And um, oh, because I used to write for Jasper Carrot do odd sketches. Yes, you and did. Mm. And um, oh, what Mike White hair doesn't it? Mike White. Mike Hill. Whitehall. Mike Whitehall. Whitehall. White. Mike Whitehall. Mike Whitehall. Mike Whitehall. Mike Whitehall. Mike Whitehall. But one of them writes um, Peaky Blinders, doesn't he? That's right. Now he writes. Uh, was it, no, Steve, sorry. Steve. Yeah. So Mike, i tell you what happened. Mike Whitehall, after they made a phenomenal success of uh, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, he retired at about the age of 36. <laughs> and, uh, and Steve Knight went on to direct a very good film with Tom Hardy, and then he went on to do lots of stuff with... Uh, Did Piggy Blinders. So Steve Knight is a writer and director and has done some phenomenal stuff. Yeah, he has. Blast his eyes. Um, uh, okay. Apparently, Ed, mm -hmm. we forgot to change the... Uh, Arnold stickers on the wall. Yeah, it still says Arnold. Ah, Arnold. Well, where's Donna? Spotted. Where's Donna? 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 <laughs> well spotted, gang. Oh, look, this is funny. Oh, there's the baby scutters. 
I'll do the yeah, piece of art. Is that the, the male or the female stutter that got pregnant there? Is that another mistake? I'm not well, sure. Well, we, <laughs> we, we don't know. We weren't present at the birth. <laughs> Um, so now here we are back in time, a pregnancy to kid, circa 1980 something. That's a lovely outfit Danny's wearing. the detectives wearing that we're talking I about, used... Jasper, that was one of your shows, Ed, wasn't it? You did detectives with Jasper? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I did a couple of series of that. I have to say that before he made a fortune, Paul Smith really uh, had to struggle to keep that company afloat and to make what he wanted to make. He was very clever. And his editing suite, so it was a complete video. and. Oh, it completely, you know, it was like walking into a Los Angeles edit suite, wasn't he? Yeah, it was. He used to import radio tapes, 24 yeah. hour radio tapes from a, an LA radio station. You walked in and there was this, hey, it's a lovely day down at Pasadena today. And it, yeah, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Oh, and it was a fantastic place to edit, especially if your last editing experience was the bowels of Television Center. Mm. Oh, absolutely. You know, people bought you a cup of tea and things like that. Oh, my God. Bottle of wine in the evening, mm. menus from local restaurants. Well, I don't remember that. <laughs> I used to have one of those baby scutters, by the way, and I don't know whatever happened to it. One How can you scutters. lose a baby scutter? I lost one when we moved. I had absolutely had one of those, and I lost it when we moved. Scutter lives matter. Yes, Paul. <laughs> Mark Bonner gave a very good impression of Paul Smith in, in Quiz. I loved yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It was good, wasn't it? And I thought that Mark Bonner was very good as Paul. Yeah. It was slightly scary to watch all those people you know. Well, he is slightly scary to work with, Paul. I mean, you don't... Yeah. You don't muck around with Paul. And there, that was the end of the series. And yes, it was terrifying leaving it with that cliffhanger. And we'll talk about um, when we come to um, season. So if, you're, if you're watching on um, Amazon, because it's the end of the series, um, you get a chance to see all the credits as opposed to it banging into the next episode. Mm. I hate um, it when they do that. They zoom into a tiny mm. little stamp sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. Well, did... Um, I mean, it is interesting, you leave, a, you leave so many things unresolved there, because, in fact, unbelievably now when we look back at it again, but the recommission to three was actually the most dangerous point in the saga of Red Dwarf, because one to, one, uh, series two was commissioned, while one was already on the air, it just flowed straight through. And yet when you look at series two and how strong it is, it's it, amazing to remember that actually it was quite a battle to get three recommissioned. I mean, there was quite a bit of doubt. I think probably controllers changed at mm. BBC Two probably. at the time. And it wasn't a straight given. And yet you'd left all this up in the air. What, I mean, was that part of a hook to say to them, you've got to bring it back? No, no, no. I mean, we thought if they don't commission us for another series, then we don't have to worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> you can just drink lager and eat curry for your own enjoyment. I must admit, th towards the latter part of the episode, when I was re first read it, I thought, how does he give birth then? You know, and every hideous um, sort of uh, thought went through my mind about how a man would give birth to a child. But then when uh, uh, Rimmer goes caesarean, then I went, oh, yes, of course, that's how it's done. <laughs> I think too much thinking there, too much Yeah, thinking. yeah, yeah. I don't want to go there. Yeah. So, folks, this thing behind me is actually called the Antiverse, uh, and it's, it's got an interesting story. Apparently, uh, a weather station in the Antarctic was sending up weather balloons, as they do all the time, but on a particular day of the year for three consecutive years, they got rubbish data back. They couldn't make any sense of the data that they were getting, and it happened one year, and they thought it was just a glitch, and a second, and then the third year when it happened, they really investigated this data in some detail, and they could not explain it. The only explanation that made any sense at all was that it was the universe going in reverse. Things that they thought would have been going up out of the Earth, um, radiation or whatever, was in fact going back into the Earth. It was in fact a parallel universe or an antiverse. And this is the uh, pictorial image that that inspired somebody to do. So I think if you Google antiverse, you will find this. Well, um, Joe and Ian have, have, have Googled it, and apparently it's a universe that's full of ants. There you go, an antiverse. Yeah. <laughs> I just think that's an amazing story. If you look at... Yeah, it's it's universe, you, is there an uncle verse as well? Is, yeah. what, is there an uncle verse as well? Antiverse, yeah, it's an uncle verse. Yeah. Um, do you think... Uh, but, but this was over the pole, though, was it, Paul? Rather uh, than Antarctica, the... well, near, yeah. somewhere over the Antarctic waste, oh, yes. Okay. okay. Oh, all right. 
Excellent. I thought you all into silence with, with silence. I'm really, yeah, yeah, we start looking at, we start looking at the chat <laughs> okay. and then we all just go quiet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah absolutely. Um, so that was, oh, okay. the, that was the end of the series and that was a, a good cliffhanger to hang on. Of course, you never addressed it. I, on the whole, I, I was very, I haven't seen that for 30 years, and, mm. uh, that series. And I was really impressed yeah. with the <laughs> quality of it. I mean, Can I, I just got, say, though, with that last episode, when I first read it and I thought it's a parallel universe and there's female listeners and female rumors, I thought, oh, no, I know what they're going to ask me to do. They're going to dress up Chris and Craig as women and I'm uh -huh. going to have a split screen frenzy. Oh, wow. That was my first thought. I thought, ah, oh, this is it. The final split screen. Ooh, you know what? That would be fun, wouldn't it? Except much Craig would make it that Because how, how much better was it to have Suzanne Bertice, for example, doing the Rimmer? Yeah, yeah, for sure. With all Chris's brilliance than to have Chris uh, yeah. just brought a new... And also, I think it's funny to have a, a genuine woman doing, doing yeah. those things. Absolutely. It was just when I first read it, I thought, oh, God, I know what they're going to do. Yeah, oh. Did you have to go by Edwina Bai for those sections of recording? Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, exactly right. I did. And I wore a gingham dress. And, and Michelle, Michelle Agnew. <laughs> Don Di Stefano. Don Di Stefano would be, would be a Mafia Don, wouldn't he? Yeah, but you were, you were Paula, weren't you, at the time? I was Paula many times. Yeah. That's yeah. Good <laughs> You You'd have to go to Amsterdam, folks, for that details was, on that. that. Is definitely <laughs> what happens in Manchester stays in Manchester. So. <laughs> okay. Did we fly up there? This is what I was trying to remember. Did we fly up there? Well, it was a variety of things. If if it was if generally no, what we would do is we oh. rehearse in the uh, acting rehearsal rooms, yeah. and then we get on a coach, and the coach would take us up there. Yeah, and I know. Up the night. It's left from the, from the Hilton. You had to yeah. bring it back on the Friday, didn't you? And then on the, yeah. after the recording, we get back on the coach and go back to... Yeah, that, 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 yeah that we was all remember three. that. That was series three at Manchester, but I thought for my, that one episode... No, Hat, I think just to fool you, just to fool you because you're a guest artist, <laughs> you're on a private jet, but normally... <laughs> <you're in laughs> oh, God, Air Force One, I remember. I, you were on Air I, had, I had a you weird recollection that we did do that, but... Craig kept missing the plane or something. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. And that's a, why I thought a, a, when it came depended. in series three, Guys, would we have done that? We were going by much, coach. It'd be much more expensive <laughs> and, and much less efficient. I mean, if we, if we had a coach no, outside, why do I think that then? We had a coach outside Northampton rehearsal rooms. We knew where you were. We could lock mm. you on the coach. Yeah. yeah. And deliver and then, you to the hotel. And then the coach would be waiting outside the TV studios at the, on wrap, and then we're getting about go back to London. But Ed, yeah. when, no, I remember that for series three, but just two. Didn't you do what I used to do? When I did Filthy Rich and Cat Flap in Manchester, mm -hmm. for some reason we must have been going out very close to recording. Mm -hmm. So I had to edit the next day. So I used to have a car waiting outside for me mm -hmm. and I slept on the back seat back to London. Mm -hmm. I was driven straight home because yeah. I had to be in a television centre on the next morning to start yeah. the edit. Didn't, didn't you have that as well? Uh, no, what we did, we did two things is that on... On this, um, Ed Wooden, I think at that stage, would start to do an oh, offline, and I'd join him halfway through the following day, and then we okay. go into an edit. But when we were used to do uh, Red Dwarf, when we first moved to Shepparton, um, there was a truck, and we'd shoot the thing in the truck, and then the truck would turn into an edit suite, and I would edit till about 3 a.m., and then start rehearsals for the main show the next day. <laughs> that was a killer. <laughs> that was a killer. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I think um, yeah, I would, I would join the following day, like halfway through did, the day, when I he did. when he compiled the takes together. There's a few people asking about the cliffhangers. Somebody said I always do cliffhangers. This is a great story, and I believe it to be true. There was a a, a comic strip, an adventure comic strip that was syndicated uh, in in America in the in the twenties. Oh, I know. This and uh, and the the. the uh, the newspaper magnate uh, fired the, um, the, the the comic writer, and uh, so for his last strip, he had the hero sent underwater in chains in concrete with boots <laughs> on, and then buried him under a landslide, and he said, "Good luck with that." And so he went away, and eventually the uh, the newspapers come back to him and say, "All right, we can't get out of it." Come, come, come back and save us. So he I'll came back. What you like. And, 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 yeah, and what he did was his first, the first uh, strip said, with one mighty leap, 
he was free. <laughs> and that's always, you know, so well, you're always going to be able to get out of a cliffhanger. Well, that is so weird. We must be just of the same age because I absolutely have heard that story before. Oh, yeah. and it Jack wasn't was his name was Jack. Jack, yeah. okay. Yeah. You and I have never Jack was free. You and I have never passed it, but absolutely, that's a... I, I well, whether it happens or not, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting uh, lesson, I think. I think. It, well, look, the fact but that... Any of you who are writers out there? It yeah, is like, a lesson for writers. Thought it was all a dream. <laughs> well, it would have been fun to start the next episode with Craig sweating on a table somewhere, and you think, oh, my God, he's giving birth, and you <laughs> pull out to find out he's got an ingrown toenail. That's nothing to do with it. Right, or he but, just met a very hot vindaloo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just recovering from a really hot vindaloo. Very good. Well, you always yeah. had, it, with, with this anything can happen uh, setting for Red Dwarf, you always had that threat at the end of a series, didn't you? If anybody had been difficult or new contract negotiations were going badly, you could always just put a crash at the end of uh, a given series. Well, when, when the cast, and, and, and Hattie's excluded from this, of course, because she always behaved, but when they were misbehaving a little bit, I would, I would just go up to them and go, <laughs> did the trick, did the trick. You could do anything. Our, our revered business partner by this time would have been Charles Armitage. I would just love to put Charles in the position of, think at the end of The Young Ones where the bus goes over the cliff and it crashes. Yeah. Yeah. Now guys, who wants to be in series three? Yeah. <laughs> but it was, it was like that one, oh, I hate to say the name in case I get it wrong, where it was all of a video machine. Oh yeah, the uh, back, back to reality. reality is it? Yeah. No, is that right? Yeah, back to reality. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say that. Yeah, I, I remember you were kidding us all that, that you were bringing in a new generation. You were going to have Red Dwarf the next <laughs> well, generation. Paul was furious when he read this. He said, it's a great script, but you can't do this. You can't just change. And he, when he got to the end, it was all cool. <laughs> <laughs> So guys, just a quick update on some housekeeping stuff. Um, thank you, those of you who joined us last week uh, for Waiting for Godot. It was, I have to say, a bit of a special and lovely event. We raised about £33,000 for the Royal Theatre Fund. And by yeah, God, so thanks to all you guys. Thank you, everybody who did come. It was sold out, so, uh, you know, great that you got in. Um, we're not sure what their plans are to do more, but uh, we'll let you know as soon as we know. Uh, as far as our shows are concerned, as I think we've already said, next week, uh, we finish series two now. Next week, we're going to do a music special with the legend that is Howard Goodall. I'm hoping, actually, I haven't quite heard back from him, but he has said a month or so. He said ago, he'll do it. He said yeah. he'd do it, so I'm hoping he will come yeah. back. He hasn't said no, so we're thinking that's got to be yes. <laughs> we're thinking that's got to be yes. So we're hoping to join you next week, not with an episode. You don't have to line up your DVDs. Uh, we'll be talking to Howard. Um, the week after, we're going to do another uh, lockdown theatre. Hey, yeah, guys, come on, big up Howard in the chat and I'll send it to him. Yes, yeah, big up Howard in the chat. Yeah. Tell him how much you want to, because then if he says no, we can actually send it to him and say, look what you're doing to, to these working, people. Loyal ah, look, it's going crazy. That's nice one, guys. guys. <laughs> Howard, that's it. We're going to send him that tomorrow. Yeah. Brilliant he, work, guys. He made him stone not to do that. So hopefully you'll see him next week as a result of that onslaught. Um, <laughs> The week after, we're going to do another lockdown theatre. It's another uh, Rob script written this time with a fantastic writer and stand up called Hilda Barker. Uh, we haven't and it's about been... a virus. It's about you know, a virus because... attacking England. And that could be how it could. Yeah, we'll have to edit that one out, Peter Jones. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, so that's the following week. And then, guys, we are going to take a wee, a wee summer break. It's, uh, hopefully, the lockdown's lifting a bit. That's not to say we don't expect it to come back in the autumn and we want to be fresh and ready for that and we will be back uh, if we're still in lockdown conditions in the autumn but we're going to take August off and have a little break. Uh, also just to say as you know we never ask for money for any of these things but we do fundraise when we do the lockdown theatres. Uh, the NHS uh, Just Giving page is going to close uh, now after this broadcast. Shelley is just going to close us and I think Shelley did we get to 2,500 and something? Uh, yeah, it was over 2,500. Just yeah. over 2,000. So again, a huge thank you to all of you. That is great, guys, because that's all voluntary. You didn't have to give a penny. Yeah. That, that was brilliant. Yeah, really nice. The one more we're going to do, we just feel that the climate's moved on a little bit and the NHS is not by any means plain sailing, but has come through the storm. 
And at the moment, our business, our entertainment business, and the people we all work with all the time, Holly will be the first to tell you, their business has just evaporated overnight. There are no comedy clubs, there are no theatres, there are no music venues. It is an absolute cataclysmic disaster. And so uh, on the 19th, we'll be raising money for the same fund that we did Godot for, the Royal Theatrical Fund, which Bob Lindsay is uh, president of, uh, and they uh, help uh, all industry workers who yeah i mean for, for me the, the the focus has shifted now and we want to turn our our, our vision to, to trying to make the future we want um and, and and this will genuinely help people in trouble there are skills that will die out if we don't do something there are theaters that will die out if we don't do something and you know look guys you know how important the cultural society is to the uk to its to our own social lives and to its economy and, you know, just imagine the West End without theatres, and that is actually a possibility, or at least with half the theatres we've got at the moment, which will so diminish us as a society and also as a, a cultural yeah. power in the world. Yeah, it, it's not an elitist <laughs> thing. In the first place, more people go to the theatre than go to football matches in this country, and it also fuels the rest of the entertainment industry. Uh, you know, people can into a show, they go to a pub, they go to a restaurant. It, it, it generates income for us as well. Molly, Molly, all, those little, all those little comedy clubs, they're all in desperate trouble. All and even desperate. what they call um, England's Town Hall, which is actually the Albert Hall, that's in trouble. The that Albert Hall, close. would you believe that? That could close. So that's how serious it is. Okay, that's how serious. Molly is saying that the Nuffield has closed. Oh, not the Nuffield. Oh, God. Yeah, it's actually it's gone. gone already. Yeah, well, look, we can do what we can to help, but at least keep, you know, the... the, the uh, you're pointing alive. out that, that Norman is actually doing a stand-up gig tonight, a virtual stand-up gig, uh, which I think you got on the news sheet that said sends around every week. Uh, so I think oh, and while I remember, guys, 10 o'clock tonight, BBC Two, M M our own Martin Kemp and Gary in uh, a mockumentary uh, called All True, I think it is, on BBC Two at 10. It's right. very funny. I've seen it. Patty, are you doing any of these virtual gigs? Are you? Um, not stand up gigs. No, no. And the other idea, and I'd love to. <laughs> Thanks for the opportunity to give me a chance to uh, recommend it, but I'm not. No. <laughs> well, anytime you're on, let us know. Uh, nerve wracking. Whether Zoom's going to work or not, it's too nerve wracking. <laughs> listen, hope you'll be with us. I'm not sure we haven't done the casting yet, but hopefully you'll be with us uh, in two weeks' time. <laughs> yeah. Um, the other interesting idea is this driving comedy that people like yeah, yeah. Uh, Bill are doing, um, Jason Mumford I saw the other day, uh, Bill Bailey, uh, where they actually perform live on a stage and you, in a huge car park and you drive in like the old American movies. Yeah, they're doing that at Brent Cross, they've got Reginald D. White tickets. There you go. There you go. People are trying to... <laughs> Reginald D. Hunter. <laughs> That's Elton John, isn't it? That's half Elton John and half Reginald D. Hunter. <laughs> So guys, I think yeah. that's it for the day. Hattie, thank you so much for joining us. Any thank messages you. to the fans, Hattie? Anything you want to say? Oh, no, thank you. It's great. You, I, I just love the fact everyone still loves it after all this time. I'm so lucky know, to be in it. it. I just love it. It's brilliant. It is. It is. Thank You're you, everybody. A, you are an extraordinary group of fans. It has to be. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Uh, thank none, you, guys. None just like it us. for anything. None like it. And we hope to see you in Nottingham or wherever it is at some point in the future, yeah? Yeah, yeah, we hope we will be there. See you next um, week, Howard. And I've got a haircut in half an hour. <laughs> God for so that! So excited! Oh, God for that, because that bloody bush every week. Is <laughs> oh no! <laughs> the Professor Wito look. <laughs> Don't look up the antiverse, folks. Hope you find it. All right, listen, All right, guys. Go. Thank you so much. You're such a wonderful bunch of people. See you. Thank See you, you next week, guys. Bye. Bye.